Hi everyone, it's Laura Binding and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the technique of Viking knit. So I have a few examples here of what Viking knit itself is. Um, we're going to be using one continuous length of wire and a tool which is called the Lazy Daisy and I'll talk you through that in a moment. I'm just going to show you some examples of what Viking knit itself is. So this piece here is an example of single knit. I've used a heavier gauge of wire for this piece so you can see how visually it changes the appearance of the bracelet. This is also single knit and you can see this looks quite different to the piece I've just shown you. And Again that's just done because I've used a thinner piece of wire and I've actually used a different size of the Lazy Daisy to create a different effect. So you can see here that this is a pair of earrings that have been made using the single knit and this has been made using the smaller tool and I have added gemstones in as I've gone along. And finally you can see here that again I've used just a section on this necklace to just tie the whole piece together and I've actually done a double knit here so visually it's completely different. Um, and this is using a thinner gauge of wire. So this itself is Viking knit and the look that you can kind of create. So now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the tools. So the tools that you'll need for the technique itself are the Lazy Daisy tools and the draw plate. So the tool itself comes in two different sizes. We have the half inch size here and the quarter inch size here and they obviously refer just simply to the diameter of the tool itself. Then we have the draw plate. This will cater for the larger knit that comes off the larger tool all the way down to the smallest size here. This itself is quite essential for completing the look when you've done the knit itself. We also have this little uh, drawing pin here. This has got like a longer length of the pin itself, which is essential for being able to lift the knit away from the tool if it's a little bit too close or too tight and helping you to get the wire to go underneath the loop. The only other tools that you may need for this project will be your flush cutters, your chain nose pliers and your round nose pliers. The tool itself, as you can see in the two different sizes, are actually the, the same in the way that they work. The daisies are removable from the actual rod itself on both of the tools. The half inch has 12 loops in the daisy section or holes and the quarter inch has 6 so you can see that the looks that you'll be able to create will be different. So you're going to use these holes to be able to create your loops on your tool and on your knit. And so you could actually use every single hole and create a 12 loop knit. Or you could skip every other one and do a 6 loop knit and so on. There is actually instructions in the tool itself that gives you ideas as to how to divide the loops and spaces to create different numbered loop knits. The tools also have these sets of holes in them and you'll see that they're diagonal so there'll be a, one that's slightly higher and one that's slightly lower. On the larger tool there are actually two sets of holes but I only ever really use the top set. There's also some grooves as you'll see here and I'll talk about those in a moment. And at the end of the tool you'll see that there's like a cone and a little drill hole again and that will help you to create finishing touches to your jewellery. I'll be showing you how to use this to finish your jewellery off in another demonstration. I'm going to show you how to start the Viking knit on the larger tool just because it's easier for me to show you the diameter being larger and you'll be able to see more clearly the process I'm doing. So to start this knit what I'm going to do is remove the daisy part of the tool. Now I do this so that I can get it nice and clean and attached to the tool itself. I just find this easier myself. Now with regards to how much wire you should use to do this technique, it really is a case of how comfortable you are working with longer lengths of wire. Obviously the longer that you can use the better because that would mean less add-ins but obviously you don't want it to be so long that you can't handle that amount of wire because it is a repetitive process where you are feeding the wire around continuously. So you just have to find what's comfortable for you. 
I've gone ahead and cut a length of 0.4 wire so I'm going to feed the wire down through one of the holes it doesn't matter which hole there's no relevance or significance to that and then I'm going to take the tool itself now it is important that you use the hole that's at the highest point of the tool so if you look it's this side here I turn it around and I can see that that one is lower and I'm going to feed that wire directly in so that it comes out the other side keep it nice and straight I'm then going to place that daisy back into place and you'll see that I'm actually holding that tail so I can keep it all nice and secure so turning the piece for me to be able to see you can see that I'm holding that little tail just there so that's not going to go anywhere when I move this wire and you can see that wire is now coming up and straight through one of those holes so I'm now going to just gently twist this now I'm right-handed so I'm twisting this to the right if you're left-handed it's you, you you can twist it to the left or however feels comfortable for you the reason I wanted to twist it is so that I can get the start of a loop motion okay and now what I'm going to do is I want to bring this wire around into a loop and back up through another hole so this is the point where you need to know how many loops you want to do in this knit for easiness I'm going to be doing four so I'm going to be skipping two holes every time to create a four loop knit so I'm just going to show you the top view and you can see these little grooves now these are really handy for your starting because what I'm going to do is just pull this wire down and you can see that I'm making sure it goes into that curve and I want that wire to sit in the groove of those kind of loops. When I turn the piece around, you can see that you've got that loop there. You've almost got a cross just there. You'll also notice that just here, there's a little groove. Now I said that there was one here and here. This one here is on both the tools. It's on the smaller tool and it's on the larger tool and this is kind of a guideline because we're going to do our starting loops now these starting loops will be cut at the end of the knit so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit messy it just gives you a guide as to where to place those wires so pulling that down I'm just going to bring my thumb up and hold that into place find the end of your wire and as I said one Two. I'm going to bring that wire up into the third hole all the way around you'll see I'm still holding everything in place and I'm just going to guide that wire so it's sitting at that groove and then again I'm going to just bring that around into a loop now I've done that rotation I move my thumb to that loop and I'm just moving the tool so that I've got the blank space here and I can repeat that process so skipping one two and bringing it up into that third hole round into that loop move your thumb and rotate it around so skipping one two bringing it up and around I said I wanted to do a four loop knit if you look and I count my next two, I've got one, two, I'm back at my starting point. So I know I've got my four loops now and there's no more need. And I don't need to go through any more of these loops on the daisy. Another way to be sure is to look at the top of the tool and count how many pieces of wire you can see. So hopefully you can see I've got one, two, three, four, which ties in with the amount of loops that I want to do now we're going to start the knit itself so these are the starting loops that will be cut when you finish your chain we're going to actually start the process of the knit so I'm back at my starting point and I know this because I can see my hole just there with the starting wire and what I want to do is feed my wire straight behind the point where these wires cross so this is where you may need your pin and just to gently lift those wires up bring that wire around and feed it straight behind those loops and I don't know if you can notice but I'm still holding this previous 
loop in place. What that's doing is keeping this wire steady for me. So feeding that wire all the way around and into forming another loop to control the size of these loops. What you don't want are really teeny tiny loops. If you have really teeny tiny loops, it's basically just going to take a really long time to get a length of chain. It's going to take a lot of wire and a lot of patience. So, you know, just find a nice natural tension, a nice sort of, these loops are about half of a centimetre and they're going to draw through nicely. What you also don't want to do is pull the wire too tight so you can see there's still a bit of relaxation in that wire. I'm going to turn that and hold the loop I've just created in place and do another loop. And again you'll see I'm feeding the wire through nice and calmly, just bringing it around and almost guiding it to a natural shape and leaving it there. You don't want to pull it too tight, you want it to have a nice relaxed tension. Placing my thumb over that, rotating the tool, and repeating. And that's my first row. Again, I know I'm back at the start because we have that hole there. I can see my starting wire and I've done four loops. So if I look at my next row, I've already got a loop, a loop there. So I know I've already done that. So that's my first row. So a top tip is to now cut this wire and get rid of it. So again, making sure that you can see the wire, make sure you cut the correct wire. I can see it's coming from that hole itself. I can lift this up if I was in doubt. I can see just to check it, but it's definitely that wire there. I'm just going to snip that, turn the piece around, and you'll be able to remove that. Um, it's quite important that you remember to do that, and I try to get into the habit of once you've done that first row, remove that tail because if you forget and you continue to knit down at the tool, what will happen is you'll actually catch and secure that little piece of wire if you're using a 0.4 wire it's not too bad it's quite a flexible wire it will come out but if you're using anything heavier say a 0.6 or a 0.8 that wire will lock into place and you will not be able to remove the daisy from the tool because that will be attaching it to the tool itself so just a little tip just to try to get rid of that as soon as possible and then that won't happen you're then just going to continue with this technique so I'm now looking at this loop this cross here on this loop bringing my wire behind that forming that nice natural shape getting that consistency and going around again Now you can see we've done another two row, another row already. I can tell that because I've got two loops on each section. You need to make sure that you always just go behind that one loop and that your wire doesn't go anywhere else because sometimes it can go up. You can see there it's accidentally gone up into that one. That's going to cause a problem. Or sometimes it just goes into the middle of the loop itself like that. And again, that's going to cause a problem when you go to do the loop. You can see that doesn't look right. I've just continued and done a couple more rows just so you can really see how that knit is going to look. So to clarify, these are your rows because of how many there are. You have your columns here, which are your rows of your loops. So these sections here become the columns. And these are the based on the amount of loops you've done up here. So this is a four loop knit because there are four columns going down. These are called rungs going across because they, they simply look like the rung of a ladder. So, you know, these are the rungs going across, rows going down and columns going down. And you can see the length and the size of these rungs is what will create the different look visually when you're doing your Viking knit. I'm just going to remove this just for you to see. If I pull this if 
I just stretch this out a little bit, you can see how those loops have again have elongated and how it's just changed visually instantly. And that's how you do a simple Viking knit weave. If you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me on my guest designer page. And I hope you like this project.